Welcome in the name of our God who sees our hearts. I'm Pastor Wan Ji. And I'm Jen Herber, the CYM minister here at Eldersgate United Methodist Church. Today we celebrate our graduates with joy. We are blessed to pause at this threshold of endings of a course of study and new beginnings into all that is still yet to be. We pause to give thanks and bless. bless. All, all are welcome, welcome here. All, all means all. all. Come, let, let us, us worship. worship. We are happy and grateful you are with us. All are welcome here. Please say hello in the comments. So our call to worship. We walk by faith and not by sight. Seeking your company. Desiring your presence. As the spirit moves, let us welcome the unexpected. You and your unfathomable love, O oh God. You and your astounding grace. Surprise, Surprise us again, again as we raise our voices in praise. Opening prayer. Spirit of God, settle in among us. Look past our external features and peer inside our hearts. See us for who we really are. Yours. Stubborn, doubting, self-centered, and yet ever yours. Grant us insight to see as you see and the confidence to allow your unpredictable choices to lead us closer to you. Amen.
Hi friends, it's Miss Jen and I'm back here for another children's time on a very special Sunday. Today is graduation Sunday and so all week I've been thinking and praying for our, our graduates as well as all of our kids here at Aldersgate and I wanted to share a couple of wishes that I have for all of our kids and I wanted to share this book, I Wish You More. Some of my wishes come from this book. I wish you more we than me. I wish you more hugs than Uggs. I wish you more will than hill. I have so many wishes and hopes for all of our graduates and, and kids, but I think that while I wish for more will than hill, the hills are going to be there. And my prayer is that everyone remembers that when there's a hill or even when it's all will, that God is with us and that we are here for each other and that your church family loves you. So I wish you more will than hills and more hugs than Uggs more we than me, but I hope that you know that even during the times when the hill seems really big, the ug seems really heavy, that God is with you, the church supports you, and that you in yourself are learning and growing through those hard times. It's not always easy, but it is always something beautiful is happening. So will you all join me in an attitude of prayer? Thank you, God, for our, our graduates. Thank you, God, for all of our children. May we all be blessed with will and hugs and we and when we are feeling alone at the bottom of a hill and the ug seems really heavy, remind us that we are not alone because we are with you, you are with us, and we are with each other. Amen. Bye, church.
wonder if I'll ever find my way. I wonder if my life could really change at all. All this earth, could all that is lost ever be found? Could a garden come up from this ground at all? You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of Life is being found in you. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of the dust. You make beautiful things, you make beautiful things out of us. Join us in our prayer for our graduates. You are invited to extend your arms out symbolically towards our graduates as if we were in person. May our blessings extended over them anoint them and through these transitions, threshold spaces of endings and new beginnings. Let us pray. God of truth and knowledge, by your wisdom we are taught the way and the truth. We thank you for these graduates and ask that the Spirit settle upon them in strength. Bless and anoint all of our graduates, Kyle, Sam, Allison, Julia, Nick, Stephanie, Grace, Ryan, Michael, Devin, and Brooke, as they now finish their course of study. We thank you for those who taught and worked beside them and all who supported them along the way. Walk with these graduates as they leave and move forward in life. Take away their anxiety and confusion of purpose. May they see as you see. Strengthen their confidence and grant them courage and grace to live into their gifts. Instill in them a deepening trust and faith of your love and presence always in their future. Guide them in the ways of Christ's leadership that they may lead others in your love for the good of all people. For, for the, the sake, sake of Jesus Christ, Christ. Amen. amen.
The flowers this morning is in celebration of our graduates. Congratulations. Let your light shine. Let us pray. Listening, God, like the psalmist, we ask many things of you. Send help. Give support. Remember our offerings. Grant our heart's desire. There is not one prayer we lift that you refuse to hear. Help us to be honest with you. Hear our prayers when we grieve over endings like Samuel in the Bible. There is not one sorrow we bear that you do not bear with us. We pray with and for Cindy and Ruth and Ruth's daughter Renee with the recent passing of her pet dog, Hermano. We pray for David's sister and Heidi's sister-in-law, Linda, who is now in hospice care. By your merciful presence, may comfort touch them, and may they receive the balm of your compassionate heart. And as we begin to lift up and celebrate Pride Month, help us to continue to see one another as you see us. There is now one person you've created who is now worthy of your love and respect. We are of sacred worth to you. We pray for change when people like Jesse in the Bible overlook people whom you deem valuable and teaches us to see rather through the ways of your heart and eyes. And like David, help us to be the people you've created each of us to be, fully and authentically ourselves. May we all live into our gifts. May we be the inclusive church that celebrates who we are as the people of your grace. Surprise us with your generosity as well as through all the ways we nurture one another even when others deny our human dignity. Here are the prayers we bring before you, spoken and unspoken. We pray for your incredibly beautiful and fragile world, for our nation and all nations, for leaders, for bold and weak, for your church, changing, evolving, seeking to do your work, for families of every size and kind, and for ourselves. Spirit of God, come mightily among us and receive our prayers. We lift them to you with the one Jesus taught us and still prayed around the world in different tongues. Padre nuestro que está en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga tu reino, hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdonamos a los que nos ofenden. No nos dejas caer en tentación y líbranos del mal. Amen. We bring a reading from the Old Testament, First Samuel chapter 15, verse 34 through chapter 16, verse 13. Draw near and hear God's word. Reading from the Inclusive Bible. Samuel departed for Ram, and Saul went home to Jebiah of Saul. Until the day he died, Samuel did not see Saul. Yet Samuel grieved over Saul, for Yahweh regretted making him ruler of Israel. Yahweh said to Samuel, How long will you grieve for Saul, since I rejected him as ruler of Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way, for I am sending you to Jesse in Bethlehem. For I have chosen my ruler from among his children. But Samuel replied, How can I go? For if Saul learns about it, I will be murdered. Yahweh replied, Take a helper with you. I am sending you to Jesse. Tell him you come to offer a sacrifice to Yahweh and invite Jesse to the sacrifice. Then I will show you what to do. You are to annoy for me my selection. 
Samuel did what Yahweh said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met Samuel. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel said, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to Yahweh. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his children and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, then Samuel saw Eliab and said to himself, Surely God's anointed stands here before Yahweh. But Yahweh said to Samuel, Pay no attention to appearance and height. I have rejected him. Yahweh does not see as mortals see. Mortals see only appearances, but Yahweh sees into the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab to pass before Samuel, who said, No, Yahweh has not chosen this one. Next came Shammah, but Samuel said, Not this one either. Seven sons were presented to Samuel by Jesse, who said, Yahweh has not chosen any of this. Samuel asked, Are this all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse said, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until the lad arrives. So they sent for the boy, a youth with bright eyes and handsome to behold. Yahweh said, Rise and anoint this one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed the boy in the presence of his brothers. And from that day forward, the spirit of Yahweh came upon David and was with him. Then Samuel set out on his way to Ramah. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This past week on a visitation, I had an opportunity to walk with some members. We walked, talked, and listened, and along with us on our walk was the sweet presence of the Spirit. As we were walking, the member introduced me to various kinds of seeds of evergreens fallen from their lofty trees and laying in their dormant stages on the streets. I was delighted to walk with someone who also seemed as delighted by seeds as much as I did. She picked up pine cones of different shapes and sizes and pointed out how one variety was rounded and shaped like rosettes. Others were much larger and elongated, and the tiniest of them all was a cone no larger than the size of my thumbnail. I was told it was the western hemlock, which grows to be the largest of the hemlock trees and lives a very long life, some known to live over 1,200 years. It is the state treat for Washington, our state that is known as the evergreen state. Cones or seeds of evergreens are everywhere here, and ordinary things, if ordinary, is defined in part by how common it is. This shared feeling of delight in ordinary and common things reminded me of the extraordinary grace of one and how God would look at us humans and call us to be co-creators of God's will here on earth as it is in heaven. When we hear God, as we did in last week's readings in Isaiah, quote, whom shall I send and who will go for us? It shakes us to our very foundation in the presence of such voice. We are nothing less than awestruck. What a wonder, what amazing grace, that God would see in us the kingdom, seeds packed with all the nutrients and energies necessary for the realm, cherished embryos for the gardens of God, and each uniquely gifted to plant ourselves by hooks or spurs or propellers or coated to be not digestible and being carried within other vessels and carriers, 
all to sprout up in unexpected ways and places of God's gardens. It's fascinating to me that seeds evolve and are created in the heart of the flower, plant, and or tree itself. Maybe we are not that different, being created in the heart of God's own heart. Today's parable reminds us that Jesus had a sense of awe and wonder for seeds and for us humanity, and awe for the ordinary is extraordinary in and of itself. We are told in the Gospel of Mark, quote, the reign of God is like this. A sower scatters seed on the ground, then goes to bed at night and gets up day after day. Through it all, the seed sprout and grows without the sower knowing how it happens. The soil produces a crop by itself, first the blade, then the ear, and finally the ripe wheat in the ear. Mark chapter 4, 26 through 30. We are told the seeds grow without the sower knowing how it happens. And in another translation as, quote, he sees not how. Some translations just carry more energy than others. He sees not how. I love that. We see not how. The Markin story continues with Jesus sharing a parable, the parable of the mustard seed, and the smallest of seeds, actually a very common weed, and unseen within it, the potential that reveals the realm of God. Are we not like these seeds and carriers of the unseen realm of God? Us ordinary humans, and we see not how. Parables are narrative contrasts which undermines our assumptions of the way we see things, breaks open our accepted and unquestioned understandings to a different vision. The word parable comes from the Greek word para, besides, and baline, to throw. A parable is then throwing one thing, a vision of God's kingdom, besides another, the world as it is. It offers us to see what happens when we do that. Parables can call into question accepted truths. Parables are often subversive and can challenge us. What it reveals can lure us to consider other possibilities in light of what revelations of God's promises is broken open for us. If you remember last week, I shared that my calling was in seeing that things could be different for my daughters and that it awakened me to the moral action to be the change I wanted to see, to participate in what God called me to see differently, to the vision that God opened my eyes and heart that things would be different not only for my daughters, but that kind of change would impact things being more whole for all children of God, including our sons, and in all the diversity of ways our children find their unique and gifted expressions and belongingness. When we see the world as God does, when we act toward each other as God would have us, We are living in God's rule, reign, kingdom, dream, garden. God gives us with grace to see as God sees, and that means by faith we can participate in God's kingdom, heaven, on earth. We also recognize that we always fall short of the whole vision of God as it continues to both unfold here and now and is not yet fully present among us. We can participate in it, delight in the beauty of it, stay in awe and wonder, trust God's imagination more than our own will to act or not act. We can accept that we do not have control over it. We can't make it happen or prevent it. Like the mustard seed, persistent and resilient weed, we cannot stop it. We see not how. In our Old Testament story of how Samuel picks a new king to replace King Saul, who has lost sight of God's vision and acts as if his own power of seeing is better than that of how God sees, we journey with Samuel in finding the future king, King David. I remember well from Sunday school, the lesson that God doesn't see our exterior characteristics and sees the heart. 
I think that creates a false idealism that girls and other marginalized groups of people are told that you can do anything you put your will to. Like girls can do anything boys can do. Not necessarily. Boys do not have to dismantle church policy about not being ordained, for example. Or in our current climate, practice of don't ask, don't tell in our church is an institutional and unequal barrier that heterosexual candidates for ordination do not have to overcome. It is not a level playing field. The systems are rigged. And in King David's time, being the youngest speaks to a system of inheritance laws that makes it not a fair playing field for all children of the same household. You hear, of course, no queen of Israel, as Israel at the time was a patriarchal society. The story of how King David is chosen reveals to us that God sees the heart, and often we discount the physical attributes described. David was short. He was handsome. He was the youngest child. If these are not important in King David's time, it would not be described. It does matter that King David does not have the height that the world he lived in favored in their leaders. It's important to the story of David and Goliath. David's height is not a liability as seen in his world, but as an asset that God can be glorified through. It's important to understand what it meant in those days to be youngest child, meaning you had no inheritance, and yet King David would inherit the title of the first king of Israel when, in fact, King Saul was the first king. We are also reminded by Jesus' genealogy in the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus is the inheritor of the line of King David. The story of King David is a complicated story of leadership and what it means to lose sight of how God sees us. King David loses his sight of God when he fixes his gaze upon the wife of one of his favorite commanders and commits both adultery and murder. We also know one of the most beloved psalms is attributed to King David, Create in me a clean heart. Much like the parallels that parables reveal to us, the story in today's reading in 1 Samuel contrasts to us what the world in the time of King David saw as not worthy and valuable in the next king of Israel and what God sees with God's heart as part of God's own. In the Bible, leadership is often understood in terms of relationship of someone doing the will of God. What is contrasted, offered as parallel for readers to see, is that what the people could not see as worthy and of value in King David's time, his height, his birth order, him being a shepherd, is paralleled with what God can see, the heart of David and one created in God's own image. By saying God sees the heart, it does not mean God does not see the other things. In truth, our physical life matters that is not separate from the conditions of our heart. David understood he was the youngest, and being the youngest shaped his heart. Even psychologists today would tell us how much we are shaped by our birth order. I think there is even a study that correlates birth order and likeliness of being a leader. What the world sees and uses to accomplish the world's world is paralleled and contrasted to how God sees and what God uses to accomplish God's will. God's will, kingdom, reign, field of activity is attainable in and through what is often not considered of worth, of value, or of belonging in our world as it is. King David is a person chosen with the heart, the eyes to see the possibility of what God envisions for God's people. What our readings today reveal is the surprising nature of God calling to unexpected leadership, those whom God sees more clearly than how the people of his world saw David. The parable of the mustard seed invites us to ask, how do we see the potential that God sees? The answer to that question might begin with how we have experienced being seen by God that has helped us to respond to God's calling and practicing those ways of seeing with and for one another. 
One way I have felt seen is when I have found a sense of belonging. In Brene Brown's book, Daring Greatly, she shares a parallel to highlight the difference between a sense of belonging and fitting in. She says, quote, I get to be me if I belong. I have to be like you to fit in. God sees us, the whole of us, all of us, our physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual selves. God desires you and I to be authentically ourselves, all of me. When we are seen and known by God, we have a deep sense of belonging. We belong to God. What would it look like if we lived into the courage to truly see and be seen, to be known and to desire to know ourselves, God, and one another with the heart of how God sees us as our whole selves? God treasures us in God's heart, everything about us that makes us who we are. Our hearts are not separate from our bodies, minds, and spirits. It matters to God that we are short, we are the youngest, and other identifiers that we use in our modern day to make others the other and exclude their belonging as not one of God's own. Today, it may be race, gender, sexual orientation, gender identities, social and economic class, age, citizenship, etc. As we enter into Pride Month, it matters that we celebrate our LGBTQAI plus siblings. Our church loves us as we are. We are a child of God's own heart. We are beautiful in all our rainbow colors, and we belong in that rainbow promises of God. Today, we also celebrate our graduates, and we bless them in this threshold of endings and new beginnings. God is in their future, and as they anticipate the not yet of their lives and of God's realm, may we bless them with the wisdom passed to us by those who led the way before us. A modern contemplative theologian, Henry Nouwen, shared that often people like to live anticipating their answers to questions that will never be asked, as if we will be asked one day, quote, how much did you earn during your life? How many friends did you make? How much progress did you make in your career? How much influence did you have? The questions he thinks we will face and be least prepared to answer to from Jesus, if who we anticipate to be asked from is Jesus, that is, such questions as, what have you done for the least of mine? And as long as there are strangers, the hungry, the naked, the sick, the refugees and prisoners, the marginalized, then we should be haunted by these questions in our hearts. It's not easy being patient and trusting the promise of what we pray, quote, on earth as it is in heaven. It is not easy to enact with confidence that what God sees will come to be seen in our lives and the world. When we fall short of our hopes, we remember together through the word and word shared today, through the bread we break and share, and our presence and prayers together, that our efforts or lack of it is not what ultimately validates God's promises. We remember through our shared communion last week that it is God who created light out of darkness and raised Jesus from the dead. We are encouraged by the words of our Holy Communion liturgy from last week, which was written by Reverend Greg Dale, a trailblazing activist for the marginalized and who faced early church trials for offering the same pastoral ministries to gay couples as he did with other members of his congregation, that we are created in God's own image and from God's own heart. He was a founder of the movement that later became church within a church. This parable reveals to us that God is on the move and will complete the good work God began in us. May we take joy when we see God's reign lived out throughout this month in the lives of our LGBTQAI plus siblings and in the solidarity as allies. May we be encouraged and empowered to keep faith when we experience failure and faith fails us. 
May seeing through God's eyes and heart of imagination grant us more than our own will. Trust that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We see not how. And that is a wonder and awesomeness. May it be so. Amen. sees looking for what is hidden in the heart go as a spirit moves expecting the unexpected go as Jesus lives leading by serving go in peace love and joy amen